Hey guys, it's Richard from Graphing Dragon Fruits, and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make an organic compost tea. This organic compost tea was taught to me by a friend named Kim Fan that was in one of our dragon fruit communities. And if you guys have a Facebook, you guys can always check out my description. It has a Facebook link to a group that I have for people that are starting to grow dragon fruits. And if you're a beginner, I really advise you join it so that way you can get all the tips, send the pictures if you're having trouble, and we can all, as a member, help you guys. So go ahead and check it out in my description. It's a Facebook link, and if you have a Facebook account, go ahead and join. But right now, we're gonna go over the compost tea and what you guys need and everything you're gonna need to do to have it work, okay? So let's go over the items that you guys are gonna be needing to purchase. I'm gonna leave all of this into my description below. So if you guys need to purchase it, it will be all be there, so that way you know exactly what I'm using. So look out for that in the description. We're gonna start with grandma's molasses and you're gonna to wanna to make sure you use unsulfured molasses, okay? So this is what's gonna feed the bacteria and it's gonna help them grow. You're gonna need some bat guano. Make sure you use something that's natural or organic. This is uh, gonna help start the microbes in our tea. And this is a humic acid and kelp extract. This is also very important and we're gonna need that as well. And we're gonna need some compost. I use um, warm casting and it's all natural and organic. Make sure you always use organic, okay? That's why it's called organic compost tea. I have two air stones, two air tubes, and an air pump. And my air pump came with six adapters, so this way I can make three buckets, so 15 gallons for me. And I use two per five gallons, okay? And I will also leave this into the description if you guys are looking for one. I know there's some out there that can work for maybe six months and they just start to die, but I have a commercial one and those work great. And of course, you're going to need your five gallon bucket. And how I get my water is I have a reverse osmosis filter. This helps remove chlorine and chloramines. And those are the chemicals that actually kills all the beneficial bacteria. So you're going to want to make sure if you are using some water to make sure your water does not have chlorine or chloramine in it. And this is one way to do it. And if you guys don't want to spend any money on a filter just for gardening, you can fill up this bucket with water and leave it out in the sun to evaporate the chlorine. And it takes 24 hours for the chlorine to evaporate. So if you guys are gonna be filling this up at 6 p.m., don't use it until the next day at 6 p.m. again. So 24 hours for the chlorine to all evaporate. That's very important. So don't skip that step and to start brewing, okay? You don't wanna start it until you have all that chlorine out and then you guys are ready to go. Okay, okay. so let's go over the ingredients, how much to use and how much to put in. So I already have my chlorine free water in my five gallon bucket. We are going to use two tablespoons. So one tablespoon to one and a half tablespoons. No matter how many times I try to put one and a half tablespoon, it always becomes two tablespoons. So that's why I say one and a half to two tablespoons. So here we go. There's one. See how, I mean, by trying to do half, but it just comes to, you're going to put that in there. It's very, it's going to be very sticky in there. I just stick my finger in the water, swirl it around, get as much as you can off because you're going to be using this tablespoon again for your bath water. So I'm pretty satisfied with that. Oh, I forgot to mention, you guys are going to need some type of stick, a spatula, whatever that you guys have that's long enough to reach at the bottom to mix your stuff. So the molasses kind of just sits in there if you guys check that out. Now I'm just stirring all the molasses up and you're going to see the water get really dark. Just like that. So I'm satisfied with that. So here we go. We're going to go to our next ingredient. It's called bat guano. You're going to need one tablespoon of that. So I'm gonna show you guys how much I scoop. I level it out, one tablespoon, and we go ahead and just put it in there. Now we're gonna move to the humoric acid and kelp extract. We're gonna need one tablespoon of that only. I'm sorry, one teaspoon. One teaspoon, you guys. So one teaspoon of the humoric acid and kelp powder. And again, we use our stick. Whatever we have, we start just mixing again. Okay, it looks pretty mixed to me. All 
All right, guys, so I forgot to mention about this. This is a paint strainer bag, or you can use a cheesecloth. Any of them works. You can buy them on Amazon in a pack of five, or you can just get a whole roll of cheesecloth and then use that repetitively. So you always want to recycle this. Once you use it, just dump out the compost, wash it up, dry it, and then we use it again. So I used about two handfuls of earthworm casting. I'm gonna go ahead and grab, let me open this. Two handfuls, here we go. One. I got pretty big hands and I want pretty big scoops in my hands, so I grab a lot. You, you, does, um, you guys don't have to be afraid of using too much. It's gonna be okay. So I hold it here. You guys see the handle? I'm gonna tie it onto the handle. That way it doesn't sink at the bottom and you don't have to dig through it once you guys are finished brewing. So just like that. And like that, that's all the ingredients. We have it all set up. And now the last important part is to have um, the bacteria start to form. So this is where our air stones come in handy. I have two. We're gonna put one on each side. One on the left, one on the right. Here's my air pump. I have an extension out here. We're gonna plug it in. And there you go. So that is the whole process and all the steps you're gonna to need to, to successfully create an organic compost tea. And you're gonna let this brew for 24 hours. So it's about 7.30 p.m. that I'm making this video in compost tea. This won't be ready until 7.30 p.m. or 8 p.m., give or take, the next day, okay? I already have some made here. So that's been um, brewing for 24 hours and I took it out and this is how I would just feed it. I have my taboo, as always. I just mix everything up and give them a nice water. You wanna make sure your soil is very moist when you're doing this, so that way it actually absorbs. If your soil is dry, pre-soak your soil so that way it gets a little damp and do your feeding. Cause you know, if the soil is so dry, sometimes it just kind of washes up, it floats and then leaks out. But once your water, uh, once your soil is damp, it absorbs into all the other water, pushes out the old water and then your beneficial bacteria start to start working. And so I'm gonna go ahead and start feeding all this and end this video so that way you guys can get started onto your compost tea. If you guys enjoyed watching this video and thought it was very helpful, go ahead and hit that like button. If you guys have any question about the compost tea, go ahead and leave in the comment section below and I'll get back to you guys as soon as I can. And if you guys wanna see more grafting and dragon fruit videos of mine, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so that way you guys won't miss a single thing. Have a wonderful day now. Bye guys.